So I want you to imagine um, a few days ago when we were going through the really cold stuff. This morning kind of feels like a heat wave compared to what it was like a few days ago. Um, I have animals outside and just being out trying to feed them, uh, you just, your face and stuff, just the fluids would just freeze, you know, just trying to walk from the house to the barn. But I want you to imagine on a, on a day like that, that somebody loved you so much that they would set out and they would walk a great distance to you, to where you're at. And when they reached you, they came with an invitation. And the invitation was, I can deliver you from this world that you live in. Would you be interested in that? I don't know about you, but I sure would. I would be interested in being set free from the world that we know right now. Jesus has brought a calling, an invitation for you like that. That's what we're celebrating this morning. The fact that Jesus left perfection. Scripture declares that he, uh, that he's eternal, okay, and that he was in a perfect place, but he took on the form that we have, which is full of weakness, and he came here to give an invitation. But one of the things the scripture declares is that we must respond to that invitation. And so if he were to come to you, the invitation would, would be something like, I can take you to a place of perfection, but the deal is you've got to go with me. You've got to follow me. You've got to trust me. Would you be willing to step outside on a day like it was like a few days ago? It would be a little nerve wracking, would it not? It would have a promise, but it would be a little nerve-wracking. That's the invitation that Jesus gives. Part of what we're going to look at this morning is we're going to look at specifically at the invitation that God gave Mary, the mother of Jesus. It was an invitation to be a part of of history. And even though Mary's invitation was unique, I want you to know that you have an invitation as well. God has a unique calling on your life that he wants to use you for. And what you're going to see in scripture is that Mary responded and said yes. But I also want you to know that scripture declares that not everybody responds and says yes. Because there is a price to be paid now, that price is not about you earning something. You can't earn it. It's a, it's a total free gift. But the price is about you trusting. Will you trust? Because that man who comes to your house in the dead of night, in the middle of winter, is going to say to you, I am the only way. Because that's what Jesus says. He is the only way. And his invitation is, will you follow me? Will you trust me enough to follow me? That was the invitation to Mary, and that's the invitation to all of us. The scripture I want to look at this morning is Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, I want to look at some of what took place as he, God was preparing for him to enter this world that we now live in. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26, I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. It says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Now I want you to notice that he says, favored woman. What does that mean? It means that God's favor was upon her. An invitation was being given. If you are hearing me right now, there is favor upon you. Why? Not because of me. It has nothing to do with me. It's because you are hearing the gospel message. I want you to know one of the things, and I've talked a little bit about this before, but one of the things that we use a lot in our terminology in this culture is, you're so lucky. Oh, you got, oh, that's so lucky. 
I want you to know there is no such thing. No such thing. There is only favor. And favor comes from God, but you know what? The, 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 the darkness can give a little favor too if they think they can get something out of you. But there is no such thing as, as random luck, that things just happen. God is in control. But you also need to know that you have not been created as a robot. You have been created with the ability to respond. And so Mary was being told, you have favor. God's favor is upon you. And what he was saying was, I am choosing you. I'm choosing you. I'm calling you. I'm choosing to use you. If you are hearing my voice right now, you are chosen were chosen. God is choosing to give his truth to you and there is an invitation in there. But part of what I want you to share to want to share with you today is that in Matthew uh, Jesus says many are called but few are chosen. And what that means is this. God calls people but not everyone responds. There is a response that must take place. And that's part of what The angel is telling Mary. Now verse 29 says this, Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think of what the angel could mean. And then in verse 30 it says, Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be called very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Now Mary's being told part of the end of the story here, which is Jesus is going to reign. And I want you to know that that's very true. But right now, Jesus was coming as a baby. And we talked about this a few weeks ago. The reason he was coming as a baby is because if he came in as a king to destroy, he would have to destroy many of us. But he came in as a baby because he came first to give an invitation. Because he wants you to be a part of his kingdom before he returns to take over. Because when he returns to take over, those who are not a part of his kingdom will be destroyed. That's it. The kingdom takes over. You have a limited time to respond. And so the angel was asking Mary to respond. And I also want you to know that in this invitation that is being given to Mary, Mary doesn't understand all there is to know about the invitation. And you're going to hear some of that. She doesn't understand how all this is going to work out. She just understands that something is being given here. And even though she's being uh, told that she's going to give birth to the one who's going to reign forever, and it's being shared by an angel, I also want you to know that even though she's favored, it does not mean her path is going to be an easy one. She's going to be filled with blessing. And again, if you are hearing the gospel message, you have favor and it is a blessing. But I also want you to know this, it does not mean that your path is going to be completely easy. Because after this, after um, she was allowed to be the mother of Jesus, and after she would give birth to Jesus, she would actually have to leave her home. And the reason is, is because there were those seeking to kill her child. And so she would have to go and live in a, a foreign place. And then even when she would return, they would have to go live somewhere in a different place that they were going to initially. Why? Because there were people out there that wanted to kill her son. And even though she was favored, and even though she was the mother of of the Son of God, um, was she going to be given a palace to live in? No, absolutely not. Again, she was going to have to be careful where she went and what she said, because there were people that were going to be after her. So I want you to hear this. Maybe this morning you don't feel like you're favored. Maybe you look at your life and you say, Man, when I look at all these battles and these struggles, this doesn't feel much like favor. 
Well, when you look at the path of Jesus, and we've heard about why he was born um, in a manger and why he was born in a stable, and there was all, it all had to do with signs that God was showing that he was the sacrificial lamb. But in the midst of that, was his path easy? Absolutely not. I mean, he was constantly borrowing things from people. Jesus walked out what it was to trust the Father with his life. He wasn't rolling around uh, with a, a, you know, a, a big entourage and uh, a lot of uh, worldly power and so on. Uh, he, he was wandering around, uh, you know, <laughs> living in caves and such in order to survive. But God always provided for him. His path was not easy. So this morning, God would say to you, you are favored. Does that mean your path is going to be easy if you say yes to him? No. Does it mean it will be blessed? Yes. It will be blessed. Will it be worth it? It will absolutely be worth it. Where will it end? It will end in the kingdom of heaven. But you must choose to follow him. So it goes on. And in verse 34, Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. When you hear the calling of God, you may say to yourself, How can this happen? How could God possibly want me? If, if you are someone who is aware of your sin, maybe you're thinking, how could God possibly want me? If you're someone who's not aware of your sin, you may be seeing, you know, why would this happen? Mary doesn't understand. She's taking her questions to the Lord, and the Lord is going to respond. Verse 35, the angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her, in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and now is in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. I cannot tell you exactly how things happen. I do not have all the answers. But as been talked about, when I look at Scripture and then I look at history, you know what? I see that it lines up. When I look at my personal experiences with God, when God has spoken into my life, I have seen Him come through. That's what Mary is looking at here. And so she's being told, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. Well, what's that mean? Well, then they don't know exactly. They just know that it's going to happen. And the same thing, when you receive Jesus, Scripture declares the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. The Holy Spirit is going to change you. Well, how does that work exactly? I don't know. I don't know. I just know that God continues to transform me. Now, do, do I walk a perfect path? Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, it is so far from that. But here's what God asks. God asks that I would keep following him. He doesn't say, follow me and don't fall. He says, follow me. Don't divert. Don't head the other way. Keep following me. You know, one of the uh, injustices that has been done is that some have claimed that Mary was perfect. Scripture declares that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mary was absolutely not perfect. Absolutely not. You know what she was? She was simply someone who said, yes, that's it. What, what does God want from you? He wants you to say yes to him. Do you have anything to give him? Nope. Anything he asks of you is simply to see whether or not you will trust him because he already has everything. And so the question is, will you trust him? Well, this was Mary's response. The last verse we're going to look at. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel 
left her. Mary responded in faith. Did she have all the answers? No, she didn't. She was being told something that was going to occur that she had never seen happen, and she simply trusted. Why would she do that? Because she had had experiences with God before this. Whenever you look in Scripture, what you will see is that God will oftentimes give us experiences to let us know we can trust Him. But then after that, many times He will put us through testing places where maybe He doesn't um, answer our prayers the way that we want. Maybe we feel like we're in a place that we don't want to be and He asks, us to keep following him. That's the path that Jesus would take. Jesus would have to go down a path that he didn't want to. Because when we look at the path of the cross, he was crying out, God, if there's another way, if there's another way, but if there's not, then God, your will be done. So this morning, there's an invitation. Jesus didn't just come to earth for no reason. He came with an invitation, and that invitation is for each individual person. But this morning, I want you to hear this. There is a response that is required of you. Will you be like Mary and say, God, I don't know how you're going to work in my life. I don't know how you're going to change me. Um, I don't know how you're going to keep me following you because I know my tendencies. You don't need to understand all that. You just need to believe and say yes to him. But when you say yes to him, you are not saying, yes, I believe you exist. And yes, I believe you're the son of God. You're also saying, yes, I'm going to follow you. One of the things that I continue to experience and is just so heartbreaking to me is I run into people over and over in a times of a funeral and over and over it's declared, essentially, it doesn't matter if you follow God, you know, it's, it's, you're going to be in a better place. I, listen, I, I just want to share with you, and this is the good news, that is not true, okay? But the good news, it can be for you. But you must say yes to him. Will you respond to Jesus this morning? We're going to sing here, and I just want to invite you, if you've never made that personal decision to say yes to him, and, and you don't have to have it all figured out, you just have to say yes, but also know this, it doesn't mean that your path's going to be totally easy from this point, but it does mean you're going to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, and he's the one who's going to move through you, and the only thing he's going to require of you over and over again is just to say yes to him. Just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He supplies the power. He supplies the resources. He just requires you to say yes. Father, thank you for Jesus.